Now, a lot of my work as a canine behaviorist who focuses a lot on breed selection is advising people against overly challenging or specialist dogs. But what if you're an owner with decades of experience of owning and training dogs? What about if you're a trainer or behaviorist yourself who's looking for exactly that, a challenge? Then look no further because in this video, we're gonna be talking about those breeds for you, experienced owners. So what are we looking for here? Well, in my experience of working with thousands of dogs, there are three main categories of breeds who provide a lot of challenge. Things that are a nightmare for their often ill-equipped owners, but things that might be a joy for me to manage and refine. Now, category one is instinct-driven breeds famed for being untrainable. Category two, the breeds known for their so-called aggressive tendencies. And category three, your intense working breeds who rarely fit as just pets. So which breed in each category do I recommend to an experienced owner wanting that kind of challenge? Well, first up in that untrainable category, we've got, of course, the giant guardian breeds, the Mastiff types, like the English Mastiff and the Bull Mastiff, as well as the livestock guardian breeds, like the Central Asian Shepherd. Now, these breeds follow their deeply rooted instincts to protect more readily than their loving leader's direction, which is where this challenge lies. Now, no breeds are untrainable, in my opinion and experience, and it's all about the competing drives that we're facing. For example, other so-called untrainable dogs that I love include things like the Afghan Hound, which is famously the least trainable breed in existence, according to the Stanley Corrin's 90s research, who's more likely to follow its eyes as a sight hound and the basset hound who's more likely to follow its nose as a scent hound. The skill lies in being a leader with more influence than those drives and it's a real challenge if you're up to it. Now in the next category, the so-called aggressive dogs, by which I mean dogs selectively bred for violence over centuries, we've got some incredible dogs, but we've also got some tiny dogs who are no less incredible, like the Jack Russell Terrier. Their terrier instincts have been honed and boosted for several centuries of breeding practices that rejected the Kennel Club and any other attempts to make the breed a show dog, meaning that they are a prey-driven, energetic handful. On the larger end of the scale, coming with an enormous amount more risk and about a hundred different caveats, you've got dogs bred for fighting, like the Japanese Tosa and the game-bred Pitbull, who need nothing short of an expert handler and specialist environment. This is also the case for the more intense livestock guardian breeds, like the Caucasian Shepherd, who are a thrill to raise into excellent canine citizens, but who really do belong on farms with experts in 99.9% .9 of cases. And in the category of working dogs that are not for pet homes, there are a few phenomenal breeds who can make pet dogs look like vegetables in comparison. When they're raised to work, 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 my mind always goes to one breed in particular for this, which sends it zooming into other breeds with similar levels of drive in different fields. So you've obviously got the poster child of this category, the Belgian Malinois, whose energy levels are through the roof along with its intelligence, which is phenomenal. Now what makes these dogs amazing to work with as an expert handler with a lot of time is that they are remarkably handler focused, which means they are seeking constant guidance and direction and so can be guided into expertise in almost any high octane role or sport. Similarly, in the intense service dog role, you've got breeds like the Dutch Shepherd or some German Shepherd lines that thrive. You've also got the hunting breeds to consider, like the German Shorthaired Pointer, the Vizsler, or the Working Line Labrador, who will keep even experienced handlers on their toes with their demand for exercise and engagement. Now, in short, if guardian breeds are challenging because they don't need you, these working breeds are challenging because they always need you.